Hello and welcome to Market Watch for the start of the week of the 20th of November 2017. Economically, things are a little bit lower this week, which is probably not a bad thing. The last three weeks have been absolutely staggering with the amount of data. Think back to basically the week of the 26th of October, inflation, we then had the RBA. Last week, we had the wage price index and the job numbers. So this week, a bit of a breather, which is nice. I still think the last week's numbers out of wage price index are filtering through and sort of what that filters into, which makes Tuesday quite interesting because you will get the minutes from the RBA meeting and whether or not they do sort of flesh out what they did say in their statement, which is that at the moment, inflation and wage growth is well below what they were expecting at this point in the cycle and just, just a bit more color that they might give you there. I don't actually expect anything realistically to sort of filter up until December with their next meeting and their last meeting for 2017, but just, just keep an eye on it. The other one to sort of watch is what happens on Thursday night for us here in Australia, which is the FOMC minutes. They've got an also quite an interesting sort of scenario. They are talking about gradual rate rises. We know they're going to raise in December. They've got a new Fed chair coming in February as well. They just hit inflation that they want to meet, but it didn't happen before the last meeting. And that might also be something sort of to point out because there is suggestions that maybe this gradual rise could actually be changed to glacial and make it very, very slow indeed. Because in a low inflation environment, what's the point of raising rates? Because you're not actually having to contain any form of rampant inflation issues. So all of that filters into it. So again, monetary policy, it's always interesting. Just keep an eye on it. I also want to flag something else that's happening in markets that I don't normally talk about, but I do really want to point to, and that is what's going on in oil. A lot of people are getting quite excited by what's happened, the fact you've seen a really reasonable rise up in the oil space. As always, I talk from a bot sorry, from a top-up view looking down. So the macro environment's quite interesting in the oil space. Currently, next week, you'll see the annual Vienna Convention going on with OPEC and what they're up to. They look like for, uh, following through with exact, ex sort of the existing cuts that we have. They're horrendously bad at agreeing to anything. And they're also very much run around whatever Saudi Arabia wants to do goes. And then the small minnow nations get sort of swept up behind them. It's the non-OPEC nations you want to watch. And that's why I want to highlight what happens at the end of the week. Have a look at the EIA numbers coming out of the States. That's on output and also on demand. And then Saturday morning next week, you also get something quite interesting, which is the Baker Hughes recount. And the reason you point to that, if you have a look at the chart on screen right now, that band in green that you can see is the thing that's quite interesting because any time the oil price over the last two years has popped through 53 to 57 US a barrel, it is conducive for non-OPEC nations to turn their rigs on. And that's what we're starting to see. So there's three points there that I've highlighted. That's what I'm really sort of looking at right now. We are just starting to see that breakdown. And that I think is quite an interesting thing. So if those of you that quite like the oil market and want to sort of look at it, Here's the chart to sort of see. And what I'd also say is that I expect on the back of what's happened in history for that to drop off again.